What's up everyone, Alex here. Of all of the creatures of the night, none have been more revered and romanticized as a vampire. From Christopher Lee's portrayal of Dracula in classic Hammer films, to the more recent portrayals in modern day, vampires have proven time and time again to have an undying fascination in people's minds. Despite much fiction written on them, however, none have tried to expand upon the intricacies of vampiric lifestyle than the works of Anne Rice. Through her Vampire Chronicles, she weaved tapestries of vampiric society that no other writer had dared attempt, painting lavishly with her prose and making us consider such things, like a child's vampiric immortality, forever appearing young despite living for more than a century. Recognizing the rising popularity of vampires, Mark Rain Hagen developed and released Vampire the Masquerade, a tabletop game that was born from his reaction that simply hunting vampires in an RPG would make for a boring experience. Instead, he would cast players to play the vampires themselves and expand upon the concepts that Anne Rice had touched upon in her novels. This, my dear viewer, is how I got embraced into the masquerade, a worldwide phenomenon that, fittingly, only a select few know about. And more recently, I got to experience what it's like living as a Ventru through an incredible narrative-driven adventure set in the world of darkness called Cotteries of New York. Vampire the Masquerade, Cotteries of New York is a narrative-driven visual novel set in an alternate reality called The World of Darkness, where vampires live among us, hidden, while their machinations control parts of society in an intricate masquerade that helps ensure their anonymity. You'll play the role of one of three characters, each hailing from a different clan of vampires. And through them, you'll be entrenched in a vampiric society the likes of which you've never seen before immersing yourself in a new way of life while choosing who to ally yourself with as you build your own coterie. Will you choose to ally yourself with a Malkavian who isn't afraid of violating the Aegis Old Masquerade? Or will you team up with a grotesque Nosferatu in solving a serial murder case that could threaten vampire kind? The choice is up to you. While there have been many games based on Vampire the Masquerade, with a mod restored version of Bloodlines widely considered as the cream of the crop. I've always thought that the tabletop RPG would also lend itself to genres that placed higher importance on narrative storytelling. So when I heard that Cotteries of New York was a visual novel, I'll admit that it piqued my interest. And after snapping it up thanks to a sale on the Nintendo eShop, I immediately felt mesmerized by how the game set the tone and mood of the ensuing narrative. Keep in mind that this is coming from someone who falls asleep on the regular reading any book that's trying to tell them its stories. Part of why this doesn't happen is due to Cotteries of New York's strong presentation, which does a fantastic job of establishing its atmosphere. Each locale features wispy painterly landscapes that utilizes bold color choices that impress upon you the familiar yet new world that's to become your playground. These gorgeous, atmospheric, and mood-inducing landscapes are not mere static illustrations. Rather, they animate and move to give you the feeling of all the life that surrounds you. These lively movements contrast heavily with the seeming unlife that you've been given, and with your newfound abilities, you see this life, this vibrance, in every human life you encounter, ultimately seeing them as prey in a life that has you needing to satisfy your bestial hunger for more blood. Combine this visual atmosphere with a sound design that blends itself with a strong playlist and ambient sounds that heighten the events unfolding, and you have a visual novel that knows how to set the table properly to let your imagination run wild. The characters you'll meet are also rendered in a similar painterly style, evoking some of the artwork from the Vampire the Eternal Struggle card game. Admittedly, this familiarity is probably what made me warm up to the game a bit quicker, though I can't imagine that Cottery's clever ways of presenting its story is only something that affects the series' fans. In what can only be considered as a terrific synergy of storytelling and presentation, Cotteries of New York constantly shifts what you see on screen to evoke a feeling of action, 
tricking your mind into thinking that there's a lot more happening than just reading the text on screen. There's clever trickery at work here, as its designers are aware that by stimulating your desire for constant movement, you are urged ever so gently to press onward and read more, and combine that with well-paced writing that allows its characters to pop in and out of the scene almost under regular, and you won't even know that an hour has passed since your embrace. Despite all the admiration I've showered this game for its presentation and how it manages to create an atmosphere by doing so little, I feel the need to manage your expectations by saying that despite its many choices, Cotteries of New York is ultimately a linear game. Without spoiling anything, the choices you make will have no effect on the events of the ending, though there are two instances that you may encounter where you could meet a premature end. This might pose an issue for some who are expecting more agency in a world of darkness. I should also point out that Cotteries of New York is the first part of a two-part story, which concludes in its follow-up, Shadows of New York, meaning that you'll need to play both games to get the full picture. This also means that the way Cotteries of New York ends is a bit unsatisfactory, which is a shame given how much care the rest of the narrative went through. Where all of your choices will matter, however, are in the ways you'll want to express yourself in this world, by selecting replies that feel closer to what you'd say in real life, in addition to choosing which vampires you're interested in recruiting into your coterie. And that latter part is important, as you won't have time to recruit them all. Only when you've chosen to surrender yourself to your role that you give yourself the opportunity to encounter many entertaining and often surprising replies that'll make you feel like you're the author of your own story, despite not being able to write your own ending. It's a similar feeling you get whenever you encounter a really well-told round of dialogue where the conversation flows naturally, despite how divergent some of the choices might seem. So I urge players to play their role as close to who they are as they can, and leave any expectation of player control at the door. And when you finally surrender yourself, you'll find that Cotteries of New York, through its atmosphere and prose, to be immensely immersive. Whether you're helping someone with an illegal act that could violate the masquerade, or solving a serial murder case, there are plenty of different flavors of stories to experience here. This is topped with writing that is equal parts dialogue-driven and personal thought, cleverly taking advantage of its audiovisual atmosphere to great effect to help your imagination construct the ongoing scenes. Some of my favorite parts of Cotteries of New York are how it chooses to describe your early experiences as a vampire in ways that I believe anyone can relate to, further selling the idea that there are some ungodly changes happening within you. All told, if my flowery descriptions of Cotteries of New York has made you curious, then perhaps this is one transformation that may be worth your attention. Keeping in mind, of course, that you'll want to consider picking up its sequel, Shadows of New York, to cleanly close the book on your journey. That said, I find that the writings and atmosphere of Cotteries of New York to be a powerful attention grabber for folks who wouldn't necessarily consider themselves as visual novel fans, but have dabbled in the idea of trying one out. And who knows, you might just enjoy your time in the masquerade. Maybe a bit too much. Thanks for watching my review of Vampire the Masquerade, Cotteries of New York. Are you new to visual novels? Are you a fan of Vampire the Masquerade? Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. I love talking about games with great stories, and if this sounds like you, I urge you to subscribe to the channel, especially if you like RPGs, Japanese games, indies, niche titles, and more. And if you're a longtime subscriber and want to help out the channel, one great way to do so is joining my Patreon, where you can get early access to my videos by joining the $5 tier at patreon.com slash backlogbattle. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.